Crystal Hurst here, owner of Dallas Mom's Vlog. We are standing out in the wind in front of the American Airlines Center for a very special behind the scenes tour that we're gonna take you on in honor of National Athletic Trainer Month. So as we have people joining us, I'll tell you a little bit of my background. Um, I am the mom of four boys, and so I am constantly thinking about safety for them, um, as well as their health. So not only am I breaking up fights in the living room and thinking about how to keep them safe there, but I'm thinking about them on the playground with their friends, as well as what they're doing on the fields, whether that be for soccer or football or whatever they happen to be doing that season. Um, so as I'm thinking about health and safety, it's important to know that we have people that that we can go to and rely on when we need a partner in knowing about things that are not familiar to us. So I have a couple of facts for you. Did you know that there are over 7.8 million high school athletes participating in youth sports today? That is a staggering number. So that means for every high school athlete, think about the number of kids that are participating at a younger level when they don't need that high athleticism to play in a sport. And with that, did you know that in 2013, there was an estimated 1.24 million emergency department visits for injuries related to commonly played sports. So these are injuries that are happening not just when we're in the middle of a, an intense game or playing with fierce rivals, but they're actually happening in practices. 62% of these injuries happen during practice time. So as parents, we need to make sure and know what to do in case these situations happen and how to keep our kids healthy and you know injury free and to do that we want to talk with um, people who are knowledgeable about this sort of thing like athletic trainers and of course who a better um, person to interview than Dallas Mavericks own head athletic trainer at Casey Smith so we're gonna go ahead and go on in and go on this behind the scenes private tour but we're also gonna ask Casey some questions as parents how can we can be a little bit more knowledgeable and how to keep our kids safe and healthy so that they can continue to play these sports um, and enjoy them while they're young and into their high school and maybe even college career. Um, as we go through this tour, be sure to ask questions in the comments because we're happy to hop online and answer them for you. Um, and if we don't know, Casey's even given us his email so he can answer those questions for you too. Um, so we're gonna go on in um, and we hope that you'll enjoy this little tour behind the scenes. that we have on, I wouldn't say on staff because they're not here today, but there are staff positions. Mm -hmm. We have orthopedic surgeon and we have an internal medicine provider. And then we have, you know, outsourced people like our orthopedic physician is with the Carroll Clinic. His name's Daniel Worrell. Okay. And within his group, there's a hip specialist and a foot specialist and a knee specialist. You know, so there's all the specialties within that group. And in our internal medicine physician, he works at Baylor. So a similar thing there, you know, if we needed a digestive consultant or we needed a hematologist or we needed a pulmonologist, mm -hmm. you know, we, we coordinate through, um, through those doctors to kind of help us refer best case. They don't travel with us, mm -hmm. so on the road we lean on the home team's staffs to help us. If we, okay. if, we, if we need medical assistance at the arena, they take care of us. If someone's ill or something, we need to go to a physician's office, they help us with that too. Okay. So it's very... It's very polite and coordinated between the teams because we all travel so much and we all end up needing help. Yeah. So, yeah. so that helps. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, walk back. all based on their individual needs, their individual mechanics, their individual injury history, uh, expected playing time tonight, things like that. Um, so you then know, you coordinate all of that? Did you tell them this is what you're supposed to be doing? Or they have yeah. a good idea? No, we, we coordinate all that for yeah. them. So we have a staff, we have um, 
three uh, strength coaches on staff, we have two athletic trainers, and we have a manual therapist. So between the six of us, um, we coordinate those things at a specific time so that they know what they're doing each night, uh, especially on game night. We want, we want everyone to get the work done they need to get done, but they can't all decide to do it at the same time. You, you know, so we stagger the younger guys or the guys who aren't playing as many minutes, go, typically go earlier, and then ask the players that are playing more minutes or starters, things like that. versus not enough, and it, it's also hard to just say, hey, this is what you're going to do the next 10 days, because you might be very sore, you maybe can play more minutes, so, you know, so you need each day to kind of evaluate that. Now, in the off-season, they, they totally can do that all the time, and, you know, sometimes we recommend that, because we're working with each other every day, so it's like, you know, they get tired of listening to my voice, or Jeremy's voice, or, so... But then our, our challenge with that is to make sure that they're doing the right things. That you know, if they're with a personal trainer or an athletic trainer back home or a therapist back home, that they're doing the appropriate things because we're still responsible for them, you know, for their availability and to be able to do the right things. Have you guys balanced, you know, like you guys have to go on to you guys change your um, like programs from the beginning of the season towards like the end of the season? Sure, absolutely. And, and that, some of that, Based on what we talked about earlier, we expected playing time, injury status, past injury status. So those things are constantly evolving. You know, we may have a young player, a 20-year-old player, who plays very little all year. You know, very little. And he may be in here with you know, 
really rigorous weight training programs and developmental programs and things like that versus a player who's in his 15th or 16th season. And we're really working on maintenance things. You know, we're, we're really just trying to keep them mobile, uh, flexible, you know, symmetrical, those kind of things. So, yeah, those things definitely get evaluated in an ongoing fashion. You know, one of the easiest things to do that, that, that we see in the research and we see in young players that we get is that the kids that play multiple sports are healthier. You know, they're, they're healthier. They, the, the sports specialization is a, is a very popular thing right now. It's like, you know, hey, you know, little kids, he's going to be the world's best baseball player, so he's going to play baseball for 11 months. And But the injury statistics and the injury rates show that if those young athletes, you know, run track, you know, play basketball, or they play baseball, or play football, and that they, they're developing their bodies in different ways, um, that they're not overusing, you know, particular structures, um, that we really do encourage them to play multiple sports. That's one of the, the biggest ones. And, you know, the other one is that we do believe in, you know, weight training programs, body weight training programs, things like that, you know, in adolescence. I mean, that, you know, just to play, especially repetitive sports, you know, <coughs> volleyball or swimming or baseball without strengthening um, it is really not what's best for these young kids it doesn't mean they have to be squatting 300 pounds <laughs> you know but it, but it yeah. does mean that they're they're learning to you know train their muscles their muscles develop at a great rate at that yes. age, and that also helps with their balance and their symmetry and things like that so we really feel that you know organized weight training programs and multiple sport participation helps quite a bit could get on the, the regular things about sleep as well, <laughs> you know, about sleep, um, you know, especially at that age, especially in active kids, like, it's really, really restorative, it really is the time when they release more growth hormone and the things, their bodies recover and build, build back up in those phases. How, um, when should kids start specializing? <laughs> you know, safest is probably... You know, near the end of high school, you know, mid mid to late high school. Um, now, that being said, everyone is a little physically different. You know, like, you know that, you know, especially in boys, you know, you can be a 15, very physically, skeletally mature, you know, maybe, maybe your friend is, and he isn't going to be until 18 or 19. So some of it depends a little on that, if their body can take that repetitive motion. But we really do feel that in late adolescence, the more you can delay that. Yeah. And there's some studies that show that that helps prevent burnout and yeah. things in, in kids as well. It's so interesting because it's so opposite of Texas culture. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, and we're looking at drafting players, you know, and we'll think, we're like, hey, this is, you know, player A. You know, it's like, hey, he was all state football player, he was all state baseball player, he played basketball at this college. It's been pretty injury resistant. We think those are good things for him. You know, versus sometimes we see an 18 or 19 year old kid that has only played basketball his whole life and has had a stress fracture, he's had some tendon problems, so he's had, you know, yeah. said some things like that. So, yeah. 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 so do you recommend full year sports like other multiple sports or what do you think having a rest? I think having a like I think having a rest in the high demand so if you're a distance runner, you know, where you're subject to maybe stress factors, if you're a pitcher where you're subject to shoulder things, there needs to be a rest period, you know, those types of things, you know, and, and I think uh, it's, it's kind of common sense thing, you know, it's that, it doesn't mean they can't be active in those times, but maybe they don't have, right, maybe they only have three hours of practice a day, you know, but you know, they like to overlap all the sports. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, you know they love to do that. Well, that's okay.